It's 9.43. Listen, John Sparks, the Chief Executive of Crises. Hello, John. Hello, good morning. Just want to quickly run over a couple of uh, things. Well, one in particular, actually. We want to find out how many people are rough sleeping at the moment. Official figures say it's just round about 5,000, but people like Crisis and Shelter say it's a lot more than that. We're talking about homelessness figures as well. We had the Chancellor of the Exchequer on the programme earlier on. This is what he said about homelessness figures. Under Labour, homelessness absolutely rocketed. It reached its peak in 2008 under the last Labour government. Since then, it is down by almost 50%. And that is because conservative policies are working to bring it down. Of course, it's still too high. It's far too high. We need to do more. But this nonsense from Labour that somehow they cut homelessness, they can end rough sleeping, their record says something else. When it comes to what more we can do, I'm proud of the action that we've taken, certainly the action that I took as well when I was the housing secretary uh, to introduce programmes like Housing First. I'm proud of what we've got in our manifesto. For example, the extra 3% uh, stamp duty on foreign buyers and putting that money into reducing rough sleeping and homelessness. Well, our reality check team says the number of rough sleepers in England has risen by 165% since 2010, according to ONS figures. But it's difficult to measure, isn't it, John? Uh, it, it is difficult to measure. Those, those official figures um, are based on annual counts and estimates, but they use the same methodology each year. So I think, I think we can be confident in the, the trend that that shows, even if we question the precise number and an increase of 165% over the last 10 years, I think will be reflected in, in what most people are seeing on, on the streets as well. Now, aside from what some people argue are root causes um, in terms of uh, welfare, changes in welfare policy. Um, a recent parliamentary report actually identified reductions in entitlement to housing benefit local housing allowance as one of the key factors contributing to the increase in, in rough sleeping, particularly away from those particular stats and, and arguments, if you like. Um, what, are the, what are the other causes of it? Why has it got, why is it exponentially the amount increasing. Are there other social factors going on here? Well, there are, of course, both very personal factors, but also bigger policy factors. And, and at a personal level, you know, it, it, it can be a whole range of issues, but, but largely driven by just the pressure that builds up in people's lives when, when rents are going up um, and their ability to pay isn't going up with it. Um, and then if something else happens, whether that's a, a relationship breakdown, whether that's losing a tenancy, whether that's losing a job, then you know, that, that issue just is exacerbated and people can be forced into into homelessness, but it is important to come back to those bigger policy questions. You know, the the key the key here is the amount of social housing, so truly affordable housing that's available and is built, the level at which housing benefits are paid, and ensuring they actually cover rents and the security that people have in their in their rented um, accommodation as well. So there are there are very personal, complex issues, but there are some big political policy drivers as well. Yeah, just to say on the Conservatives front the. The Homelessness Reduction Act 2017 was introduced by the backbencher Bob Blackman, backed by the government as well, which extended the duties of local authorities to prevent homelessness, as well as deal with those who do become homeless. All the political parties are seeking to address these issues and this problem in their manifestos as well. That was the Chancellor on Five Live. Now, I, I, I really have to say, whether he's talking about rough sleeping or homelessness of any form, his claim doesn't square with the evidence. The Conservative Party have given a corrected statement that massively differs from the Chancellor's statement, and we'll go through the evidence uh, shortly. But before we do that painstaking job, the voice of those on the street themselves, BBC Radio Lincolnshire reporter Cathy Green has been talking to some people who are sleeping rough in Lincoln. I've been out here nine years. I'm just really struggling to get off the street because I refuse to get off my dog. Why do you find yourself homeless? Why do you find yourself worth sleeping? In, in a way, um, down to my, my experience, it's because I refuse to get rid of my dog. Um, I've had it from my puppy, so I literally, until they find me somewhere what accepts pets and DSS, then I'm basically stuck out here for the rest of my life. But obviously, because I've got six boys and working with social services, I'm trying to get off the streets as quick as I can so I can start dealing with them and then 
obviously get my dog off the streets, get me off the streets, start working and start actually being an alone person again, do you know what I mean? But nine years I've been doing this and it's just getting on a bit, do you know what I mean? So it's just getting cold and cold nowadays, people are dying and it's just it's just not nice, mate, do you know what I mean? Are you aware at the minute that we have a general election coming up? I do, yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really vote or anything like that at the moment because obviously like you've got to have a registered address to vote and stuff like that, so I don't see the point in trying to vote when I'm on the streets, mate, so... And if the government, has the state done much to, to help you in your situation? Um, no, not really. Uh, like I said, I've been doing it for, for nine years, obviously four with her, and obviously it's just not gotten no easier. And if anything, it's gotten worse. It's just gotten harder. Misty, get laid down now. Lay down. So you feel a bit abandoned? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Obviously, if you want for my mates, and obviously my, my brother and that helping me out, mate, do you know what I mean? I, I'd have probably gone a couple of years ago. You just don't feel like you belong nowhere. That's the worst thing, I think, not belonging. The worst thing is how people look at you. If you look around and look at people, how they look at us, it's really bad. But if you see them on a weekend when they're all drunk, wow, <laughs> that's all I can say. Are you aware of the general election that we've got in just a week's time? Yes, I am. Have you been given much help from the state, from the government, um, to help you in your situation? Um, no, no, not at all. Um, certain agencies, all different agencies, the police, probation, the council, they all work together and uh, they don't do a very good job with considering that on millions of pounds worth of money. Well, Cathy Green, they're talking to some of those on the street in Lincoln. Right, so let's just look at the evidence because in correcting what the Chancellor said this morning in two interviews, the Conservative Party says this, homelessness has fallen by more than half since the peak under Labour. Homelessness has fallen by more than half since the peak under Labour. Now that is correct. Homeless is lower now than it was at the peak under Labour. But you really do need to look at the graphs here because that is because Labour brought it down massively and it has gone up in the years of the Conservative-led governments. It's still lower than it was, but only because Labour brought it down by more than the Conservatives have put it up. Well, we would have loved to have taunted a minister with that evidence tonight, but we tried and tried and we couldn't get one. Robert Jenrick, who runs the DHCLG, the Housing and Communities Department, he couldn't do it, nor could the junior ministers we applied, nor would the Tory party uh, put someone up. But we can talk to Louise Casey, who is the government's... Do apologise for my voice. The government's former homelessness czar and is with me in the studio. Thanks so much for coming in. Um, What did you make of Sajid Javid's take on the homelessness data? Well, it was like he was living in, in, in a, commenting on a different country, really. I, mean, I, I found it unedifying, to say the least, that somebody who actually should know a bit about the problem... He was actually DCLG minister. He was yeah. the Secretary of State, yeah, yeah, Secretary yeah. of State in that ministry. And I think it's just the worst of politics when people take specific statistics and make the best they can of them for their own political gains. And there's no way around this one. Under every single indicator, remember now I've worked for four different prime ministers over two decades and I'm not a member of a political party. The evidence speaks for itself that since 2010, every single indicator of of homelessness has gone up. The only exception is that last year on the rough sleeping figures, they came down by 2% nationally, not in London, nationally. And that 2% is about 72 people on their street count. But nevertheless, that still has gone up 165% since 2010. So it's kind of it really stop arguing about... Yeah, we don't need know, to have an like, argument about God, it. It's gone this up. This is just it, ridiculous. I mean, so look, the first thing that is interesting, and I don't know if you know what the answer to this is, the part, it is right to say homelessness, not rough sleeping, we'll come back to that, homelessness is lower than it was, say, in the early 2000s. That, and given all that we've heard about housing shortages and rent increases and house price increases, it is interesting that homelessness is people who don't have a home to go to, that that number has come down. So I think what's interesting is that, to be fair to that period in the Labour administration, if you look at what happened in, I think it was 2002 or 2003, they introduced an act that changed somewhat the definition and therefore the gateway went up, therefore the numbers went up. So if you're... Now, they went up, so that's still homelessness and it happened under Labour. So in... What happened was it went to an all-time high at that definition and it came to an all-time low in 2009. Correct. 
and now it's gone steadily up. But I think the thing here that we've got to remember is that since 2010, that form of homelessness has gone up by 40%. The number of people living in temporary accommodation i.e. no permanent place to stay, bringing up children, has gone up 60%. And the one that I find painful more, the pr probably up there with people dying out on the streets, is the fact we now have homeless children. And the number of children that I would classify as homeless, so would the government, is up by 68%. And that's a really mm. worrying But figure. What, did, what, what happened in the, two, the 2000s that it came down from a peak in 2003 down by 2009 because it came down really very rapidly over that period something happened and that's the bit i'm so interested in because we know you can do something about you, you you definitely can do something about it so, so two two things first of all that the rough sleeping strategy that i worked on and uh, worked with many other people on worked as as much as you know you can argue about how the council done not ostensibly the number of people sleeping under the streets to the public eye could tell you the numbers yeah, dropped you could see. and they stayed that way for a whole decade and that was done with a very very comprehensive strategy that tackled the reasons why people came onto the streets in the first place so we had a prevention strategy and we also have what can only be called a cure strategy which is they put money into things like drug and alcohol treatment the guy from Lincoln that can't get into a shelter because he will only leave the streets with his dog We had shelters open where people could come in as couples, where people could come in and didn't have to be dry, i.e. they could carry on drinking, uh, people could bring their dogs in, and then we worked with them to get them off the streets. So there was a kind of, this wasn't just, let's open up a load of shelters and hope people come in. There was a comprehensive strategy behind it. On the wider homelessness right. uh, issue, uh, I wasn't responsible for this. I wasn't there at that time. Many other people did it. I had nothing to do with it. But essentially, they widened two things. They put more affordable housing in place, not enough, but some, uh, and nobody's put enough affordable housing in place over the two decades right. I've worked in this issue, but they put more in. And the other thing, they did more around housing associations and right. funding housing associations to put provision in for homeless households. So the temporary accommodation figure, which we're now seeing through our roof, is people that are living in private rented accommodation. And private rented accommodation means that you have something called a benefit cap for poor people. So one of the big causes of homelessness is poverty. And so if you are now limiting the amount of money on benefit, which we are, we cap the amount of money right. for any family. It means they have to dip into their benefit to pay their, their, their rent. Their rent they, right. Because we have cut um, and capped and changed the way we do rents. So there are two big systemic things here. One is called the benefit cap, which is about the local housing allowance, which the government right. has deliberately brought in. It is not working. It's creating homelessness. And the second thing for me is, of course, universal credit, where essentially universal credit does not pay out in the first six weeks of somebody's unemployment. And we are living in a country where we have working poor And they're okay. the people that are becoming homeless. So, so I just want to be clear, because a lot of public ish, pub policy issues, you hear people say the answer is not just to throw money at it. And when you look at the causes of rough sleeping in particular, one would say there are a lot of difficult difficulties that people who are rough sleeping may be causing their being on the street. To what extent, your last question, Louise, to what extent would money pulling a lever and just saying, let's spend more money on this, solve it. Um, they need to spend more money on it, but they need to spend it very wisely. Throwing money, opening up more shelters is not necessarily the solution. The solution is a comprehensive strategy that prevents homelessness, deals with very vulnerable people out there and makes sure people get jobs. So it's not just about money. Louise Casey, thank you very much indeed.